As, As the parade of graduates approaches, we salute the states and territories whose sons and daughters will graduate today. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, South Carolina, New Hampshire, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, Maine, Missouri, Michigan, Florida, Texas, Iowa, Wisconsin, California, Minnesota, Oregon, Kansas, West Virginia, Nevada, Nebraska, Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Washington, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, Alaska, Hawaii, District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, U.S. Virgin Islands. State flags, order, arms. And now we invite you to join the staff of the group training command in welcoming the graduating divisions with your applause as they enter midway ceremony in the room and are announced in the following order.
divisions. Right. Base. Second leaders. Ball out and out of the box. Divisions. Counter. Mark. Left or right, face, 
Parade Rest. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Lieutenant Josh Jones, Recruit Training Command Drill Division Officer. I would like to welcome you to today's past review. Today you will see three divisions comprised of 275 sailors participating in their graduation ceremony and soon to join the most powerful Navy in the world. Please draw your attention to the unit position at Center Deck. There is a review commander and staff. The review commander is responsible for conducting the graduation ceremony. Today's review commander is senior recruit Jalen Forbes from Dallas, Texas. Let's give him a hand, folks. Performing today is the triple threat unit on their seventh week of training, the state flag unit on their eighth week of training, and the staff unit on their ninth week of training. These units are comprised entirely of recruits. During the night of arrival, recruits are placed into divisions of PD personnel and assigned to division managers. Recruit division commanders form the backbone of recruit training and are key individuals in the life of every recruit. Division commanders must serve as counselors, disciplinarians, administrators, and military leaders. Above all, they must show themselves as outstanding examples of military bearing, appearance, attitude, and behavior. Each division also has a recruit chief petty officer. This senior recruit supervises the divisional staff positions and leads the division in the absence of their division commanders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the graduating divisions, their division commanders, and recruit chief petty officers. As I introduce each division, they will raise the competitive flags they have earned throughout their training. As I introduce each recruit chief petty officer, the flag representing their home state will also be raised. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been completed. I will be starting from their right. Division one, two, one. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Joshua Royer. Petty Officer First Class, Melissa Shoulder. Petty Officer Second Class, Angel Rojas. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Fireman Apprentice Alex Nelson from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Division one, two, two. Commanded by Petty Officer First Class, Brooke Deer. Petty Officer First Class, Manuel Lago. Petty Officer First Class, Joshua Henderson. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Seaman Apprentice Alexander Landry from Oxford, California. Division one, two, three. Commanded by Chief Petty Officer Paul Olich. Petty Officer First Class, Zachary Shecken. Petty Officer First Class, Christian Lasada. And the Recruit Chief Petty Officer, Airman Lauren Sorolas from Raleigh, North Carolina. On behalf of the commanding officer and staff of Recruit Training Command, we congratulate these division commanders and Recruit Chief Petty Officers on a job well done. In a moment, you will see the ceremonial sideboards, boats, and honor guard take their places for arrival honors. This time-honored tradition is our formal greeting to this morning's reviewing officer. When requested by the announcer, please stand for the arrival honors, marching on of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. As a reminder, military guests shall remain covered throughout the entire graduation ceremony. And ladies and gentlemen, one final note. As befitting the importance of this occasion, our ceremony is conducted in a formal manner. However, we do encourage you to participate in today's graduation ceremony by letting your applause show these sailors just how proud of them you are. Once again, welcome aboard.
please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party. The guest may be seated. Thank you for inspection, sir!
Order. Arms. Chaplain Bush will offer this morning's invocation. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as we gather today to celebrate the graduation of these sailors from Navy boot camp, we extend our heartfelt gratitude. In the face of challenges, they have shown resilience and dedication and a commitment to the values of honor, courage, and commitment that define the United States Navy. Grant them the strength and wisdom as they embark on their Navy careers. May the discipline instilled in them and the bonds forged during their journey serve as a guiding light as they sail into the vast oceans. May they find their compass in integrity, their anchor in resilience, and the horizon in hope. We also thank you for blessing all of those who have helped shape them, their RDCs and their instructors, the families who have supported them, and the comrades who have st stood by their sides as they have pledged their loyalty to this great nation. May we, in return, pledge our unwavering support to them. And God, let these sealer, sailors feel every pr your presence in every mission, every drill, and every moment of quiet reflection. Lighten their path as they guard these United States. I pray to the honor of your name. Amen.
reporting, sir. Very well. Good morning. I am Commander Christopher McHenry, Executive Officer of Recruit Training Command. On behalf of Ken Froberg, I'd like to welcome all our family and friends attending this recruit graduation and those watching live online around the world. Joining us today is our reviewing officer, Captain Steve Yargos, Commanding Officer, Naval Station Great Lakes, and our guest of honor, Mr. Daniel Seehafer, National Commander, American Legion, along with Commander Delmar Bursky and Mr. Mike Rohan. I would also like to acknowledge staff from our fleet sponsor, Navy Information Operations Command, Pensacola, sponsoring Division 123. Our fleet sponsor program allows recruits to connect with sailors from Navy commands around the world for valuable mentoring and motivation while in training here at RTC. I would also like to welcome all of our veterans attending today's ceremony. Thank you for your dedication to our, our country. Would all of our veterans please stand so we can express our appreciation with a round of applause. The staff of Recruit Training Command is committed to providing the United States Navy with basically trained, physically fit, and smartly disciplined sailors, such as those standing here today. These sailors before you have successfully completed 10 rigorous weeks of demanding recruit training, and they have earned the right to wear the uniform recognized around the world as a symbol of freedom. I would also like to take a moment to introduce you, their family and friends, to your new family your Navy family. As you reconnect with your sailor shortly and navigate your journey together, we invite you to learn more about your family resources here at Great Lakes and around the world. Search the internet at Navy Boot Camp Navy Family to learn more about your new Navy family. Today's graduates serve as the bedrock of our Naval forces and, I will, and will join other American sailors serving around the world to defend freedom and liberty against those who would threaten it. I can say with pride, this training group is ready to graduate today. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 275 of the newest and sharpest sailors in the United States Navy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Recruit Training Command's competitive system, among individual recruits and divisions, promotes teamwork, attention to detail, and pride in accomplishment. Divisions performing above standards throughout their training are awarded recognition flags in the five mission areas, academic achievement, military drill, compartment readiness, applications, and physical fitness. These flags are carried as a visible symbol of the division's success. Each flag indicates that your sailors individually and as teams met performance standards in one or more mission area events. Any division that excels in every phase of training and earns all flags qualifies for the Chief of Naval Operations Honor Division recognition and is awarded the CNO Honor Flag for this exemplary achievement. This designation reflects a high degree of teamwork, morale, and esprit de corps, as well as the superb leadership of the division commanders. Two divisions have earned this honor today, and we congratulate them on the job exceptionally well done. A division whose performance goes beyond all expectations is inducted into Recruit Training Command's Hall of Fame. To achieve this designation, a division must consistently demonstrate superlative dedication, teamwork, and pride. Today, we have the pleasure of presenting, as our Hall of Fame division, Division 1, 2, Division 121 is commanded by 
Chief Petty Officer Joshua Royer, Petty Officer First Class Melissa Schober, and Petty Officer Second Class Angel Rojas. This award is a direct reflection of their individual and collective superior leadership. Congratulations to Division 121 for this extraordinary accomplishment. Captain Yarbos will now present this week's individual awards, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Commander McHenry, and our guest of honor, Mr. C. Hafer. Reporting, Hafer, Commander, Fireman Chief, reporting. For achieving the highest overall academic score during recruit training, Fireman Joseph Chu, Division 122 from Okemos, Michigan, has earned the Academic Excellence Award which is sponsored by the Fort Dearborn chapter of the Illinois Society of the Sons of the American Revolution. Fireman Chu receives a letter of commendation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Good morning, Commander. Airman Squirrel, good morning. For having displayed extraordinary qualities best expressing the American spirit of honor, initiative, and loyalty, Airman Peter Seguero, Division 122 from Wontaw, New York, is awarded the Navy League Award, which is sponsored by the Navy League of the United States. Airman Seguero is presented with a commemorative plaque and a letter of accommodation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Thank you, Captain. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Commander. Simon Fink, reporting. Seaman Jajun Fang, Division 123 from Alhambra, California, is the recipient of the Military Order of the World Wars Award of Merit. This award is presented for meritorious performance during recruit training. Seaman Fang is presented with a commemorative plaque for the Military Order of the World Wars. Well done, sailor. spirit and intent of the word shipmate. Seaman Apprentice Lewis is given a commemorative plaque from the United Service Organization. Well done, sailor. Good morning, Captain. Good 
morning, Captain. Good morning. Job well done. Thank you, sir. Appreciate all the work. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Morning, Commander. See what Princess Ham reporting. The Military Officers Association Leadership Award is presented to Seaman Apprentice Jack Ham, Division 121 from Carbondale, Colorado, for demonstrating exceptional tenacity and professionalism. Seaman Apprentice Ham is awarded a letter of commendation from the commanding officer. Well done, sailor. Hey, Captain. Morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Commander. Seaman Apprentice Randolph reporting. Seaman Apprentice Vance Randolph, Division 121, from Cassett, South Carolina, is the recipient of the Navy Club of the United States of America Military Excellence Award for best exemplifying the qualities of enthusiasm, devotion to duty, military bearing, and teamwork. This award places him at the pinnacle of today's newest sailors. He is awarded a flag letter of commendation. Seaman Apprentice Randolph, the staff of Recruit Training Command salutes you as the finest of this group of graduates. Well done, sailor. It is appropriate to recognize such outstanding individual accomplishments by these sailors with a round of three cheers. The adjutant will lead all graduate divisions in three cheers for this morning's award winners. I have the distinct honor this morning of introducing our reviewing officer, Captain Steve Yarbos, commanding officer, Naval Station Great Lakes. A native of North Webster, Indiana, he commissioned in 1998 through Officer Candidate School and completed aviation maintenance duty officer training in 1999. Operationally, Captain Yarbos served in Fighter Squadron 143 as a material control officer, deploying on USS Dwight E. Eisenhower and USS John F. Kennedy. In 2002, he was selected for lateral transfer redesignation and completed flight school in 2004. Following flight school, he served with helicopter anti-submarine squadron four, deploying three times with the Black Knights on board USS Ronald Reagan. As commanding officer of helicopter C combat squadron nine, Captain Yargos led the Tridents through multiple fleet replenishment and training squadron carrier landing qualification support detachments. Ashore, he served as a policy analyst focused on the United Nations and European drug policy while at the Office of National Drug Control Policy Executive Office of the President in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm recruit training command welcome to our friend and neighbor, Captain Steve Yargos. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Chris, for the warm introduction. First off, I'd like to pay a special welcome to our guest of honor, Mr. Daniel C. Hafer, National Commander of the American Legion, and all the distinguished guests up here, but most importantly, to the friends and families in the stands here, 
and out there throughout the world watching this show. It's a great privilege to join you today to welcome these young men and women as the newest sailors in the United States Navy. So, in the Navy, we love to tell sea stories and talk about history. And so I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to warn you that it's going to get a little bit dark here for a bit, and then we're going to get to some really positive stuff, because I know everybody's super excited to hear two words at the very end of today, which is Liberty Call. And I'm going to get there as soon as we can. All right, so, for all you out there, imagine it's a dark night, hot and humid. You're in the Persian Gulf, which we now call the Arabian Gulf. It's May 17th, 1987. In the Persian Gulf, right now, Iraq and Iran are at war. They've been at war for seven years. For three years, they've been attacking each other's oil tankers. It's 9 p.m. on that night. You're aboard the USS Stark, a Perry class frigate. It's patrolling these waters and making sure that there's peace throughout the Persian Gulf. At 9.09, .09, you're awakened by the sound of a missile impacting on the port side of the ship, just below the bridge wing, eight feet above the waterline. The missile's warhead fails to detonate, but causes significant damage in the front of the ship. Immediately, the ship goes dark, starts to fill with smoke, there's fire, and you hear what you don't want to hear, which is general quarters, general quarters, all hands man your battle stations. 30 seconds later, a second missile hits the ship. This time, the warhead detonates, causing the first rocket's uh, rocket fuel to ignite at 3,500 degrees. So now we have a major fire aboard ship. Ships taking on water and listing six degrees to port, which is the left for all those not in the Navy. In an instant, 29 sailors are dead. Another 29 are injured. That represents approximately one-fifth of the crew aboard the Stark. If you look out on the parade deck today, this is the complement of the Stark. That means they lost the entire flag detail instantly. Ultimately, they were able to save the ship. They were able to put out the fires, stop the flooding, and get the ship home safely. But 37 sailors ultimately gave up their lives. So why do I tell you this story? Especially, it was supposed to be on a happy and joyful day of celebration. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of secret here for the families out there. Your sailors lived this last week. What we have on this base is called Battle Stations 21. It's a 12-hour simulator of fires, floods, death, and destruction, allowing sailors to experience the pure chaos of incidents such as what happened on the start. And guess what? They survived. They did quite well, actually. How did they survive it? They survived because we've taken the lessons learned from the start in other ships, such as the Tripoli and the Coal, and threw in some teamwork, leadership, training, and perseverance. That is ultimately what boot camp is all about, providing you lessons on how to survive, and how to work as a team, how to follow the training that you're given, the leadership that you're provided, and persevere. You want to know a little secret? That training works. We prove it every day, all around the world, 24 hours a day, seven days of work, 365 days a year. In fact, sailors who were standing in your spot less than a year ago are now on ships in the Red Sea doing this that. They're standing to watch, they're in combat, fighting off missiles. That's pretty scary stuff, but know this, today's sailors are the best trained, the best equipped, and the best led Navy the world has ever seen. To the sailors before me, know that you are stronger, you are tougher, smarter, and better than you think. You've proved it. You have survived one of the toughest things young men and women can do in this country. You completed boot camp. You are the very best that America has to offer. 
There will be challenging times ahead of you. Times where you feel defeated. You want to give up. Don't. If you can survive boot camp, you can survive anything. You are also not alone. If you look in the stands and you talk to people, you'll see that you have friends, you have family, you have fellow sailors, and you have leaders that are there to support you. Don't ever give up on yourself. Don't ever let a shipmate get up on themselves. You are stronger than you think, and we are stronger with you. Don't give up the ship. To the parents, family, friends, I want to thank each and every one of you for the integral role that you have played in these sailors' success. You helped shape these recruits in the person who wanted to stand up for their country, who understands the Navy core values of honor, courage, and commitment, and had the drive to make it happen. We now welcome each and every one of you into the Navy family. Each of you has selflessly answered the call of duty to serve a cause greater than yourself. You have passed every test, every triumph, and triumphed over every challenge, and proven yourself worthy of wearing the uniform of a United States sailor. Whether you stay for five years or 30, you have joined an exclusive fraternity of those who have chosen the path of service. Sailors, I can tell you from experience that you're about to embark on one of the most challenging and exciting adventures of your life. But I can also tell you that if you serve with honor, keep the faith of your fellow shipmates, and strive for excellence in everything you do, it will also be one of the most rewarding. You've chosen to serve your country at a time when it's most needed. When America must show a strong presence throughout the world, in the skies and on the seas. You've taken the task of defending our nation, and the instructors and staff here at RTC have done a masterful job of preparing you for a tremendous duty and responsibility. You have earned not only their respect, but also mine and that of a great nation. I'd like to pause just for a second here in my speech and recognize the four divisions out here. First is Division 923. They are the ceremonial division. The band, the flag detail, the color guard, the rifle team, they've done an amazing job. A round of applause for them. <laughs> Additionally, we have three divisions out here of our newest sailors, Division 121, 122, and 123. Job well done to each of you. In particular, Division 121. Bravo, Zuby. In closing, not as a Navy captain, but as a fellow American and sailor, I would like to first say thank you for your service and job well done. Let me be the first to salute you. Congrats, sailors. Captain Yaros will now receive the salute of the graduating divisions, and he will be joined on the drill deck by our commanding officer, Commander McHenry. Please remain seated until your graduates have been placed on liberty.
Please join me in one more round of appreciation for our wonderful musicians of Navy Band Great Lakes. Flags. Post. Section leaders, fall out and retrieve outer garments. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the only day for access to the Navy Exchange and photo pickup. Today and tomorrow, you can pick up your sailor at the Yorktown parking garage. Sailors going on Liberty without a vehicle are to exit gate 8 toward the train station parking lot. If your sailor is reporting at Naval Station Great Lakes for follow-on training, you will experience some waiting as your sailor checks in. As you wait, the National Museum of the American Sailor welcomes your visit. It is conveniently located just past the main gate of Naval Station Great Lakes with plenty of parking, free admission, and a helpful and friendly staff. Thanks again to each and every one of you for joining us on this most memorable of Navy days. And without further delay, now hear this, Liberty Co